Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the Still BR600 backpack blower. I'll also cover the Still BR700 backpack blower as well. They're basically the same blower, but I'll go ahead and show you the differences between the two. So if you're looking to purchase one of these blowers new, I'll discuss some of the common problems that you may encounter. Or if you're looking to purchase a used one, I'll go ahead and give you an idea of what to look for before you purchase one. So in just a second, we'll start with the BR600. So the Still BR600 has been Still's workhorse for many, many years. This blower has been around for a long time, and it does hold up quite well. It does have a couple major problems that I will discuss, but overall, these things are good, reliable blowers. First, I'll just go over the kind of general condition of it around the outside, and then we'll get into uh, more of the uh, engine issues that I see. So engine cover-wise, these things are really good. They hold up quite well. Occasionally, these things will get broken around the exhaust and whatnot, but overall they're pretty good. Recoils are good, they hold up quite well, they're strong, no major problems with those. The gas tanks on these, like a lot of the still products, I usually don't have any issues with the gas tanks. They're a nice heavy plastic and they do hold up quite well, no issues with those. Air filter covers are pretty good, they are prone to cracking. Uh, and there are some issues with the still air cleaner covers that I'll discuss here in a minute. The blower housing itself is pretty good. They hold up just fine. They will get cracked or they will get holes punched in them if they do encounter any kind of impact. And that's pretty standard stuff across the board with a lot of the blowers. Uh, the frames on these are quite good. They do hold up well. Also, you will get them like a lot of the stills. They do... A lot of the stills do have this type of design for the strap, and the frame will break off down here and break out. Again, a lot of it's just from throwing it around in and out of trailers and whatnot. But overall, they're fine. The straps on these blowers are good. They're comfortable. You will get them like this one. It's starting to tear just a little bit right here, or they will get torn at the top up here. But overall, they're fine. They hold up just just fine uh, going around this side of it again you can see where this one's kind of broken a little bit again that's kind of a common thing that we see the elbows on these blowers are good they hold up quite well I don't have to replace a whole lot of them like I discussed in my BR 800 video this plastic seems to be have a little bit more forgiveness and they do hold up a little bit better I think uh, flex tubes are fine again like I discussed with a lot of the backpack blowers, they will wear out on the sides. A lot of it is just because of wear. The throttle designs, very similar design to all the rest of the Still products. Um, this one's a little bit older design, but they do hold up quite well. You will get an occasional throttle cable that will break. They do tend to come apart like this one is right here where it goes into the housing. You know, it's just from use. Um, this cable just flopping around, getting caught on trees and whatnot, and this is pretty common across the board with the stills, or echoes even for that matter. So overall, general condition when you're looking at one of these blowers, that's kind of what you can expect. If you're looking to purchase one of these blowers used, one of the big things to look for almost immediately when you're looking at it is right here so you can see all that oil on the bottom of the recoil and on the top of the gas tank in there if you can see it there's a lot of oil down there it looks like it's been leaking and that is one of the bigger problems these engine pans on these engines like to come loose and leak and create all kinds of vacuum leaks and uh, um, issues with how they run so if you're looking for one used and you see that, you're going to want to take this cover off or at the very least take the recoil off of it so you can get in there and you can inspect that engine pan. So what I'll do is I'll take this recoil off real quick and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about for this item here. Uh, if you also, if you're looking at this primer, this primer is a really dark color. They're no, you know new, they're a nice clear color. So when they start to get dark like that, they could, they're prone to cracking and leaking. Or if the carburetor shaft is worn on this thing, you will start to see a lot of dirt build up inside there around the carburetor itself. And that could be an indicator that you have a carburetor shaft problem. 
and the price of these carburetors have gone up significantly in the last few months. I think they're right around $110 now for a new one. And these do wear out quite a bit just because of the way the throttle design is and the way the throttle shaft, uh, the cable pulls on it and it does wear out the shaft. I did make a video on that. You can look in my playlist under still and uh, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But let me take this recoil off. Let me show you what I'm talking about with the engine pan. All right, so I've got this recoil off, and when you look at this recoil, you will see all the oil on it. So this is an indicator that the engine pan is loose and leaking. So if you see the recoil, it has that. And then when you look in there, let me get my light here, you can see all the oil. So this is your flywheel right here, and then the engine pan is right back here and you can see all that oil around there. So that's a good indicator that this pan is loose and leaking or bolts are falling out of it. So if you see that on a used one, you might want to be cautious about purchasing it or, you know, it doesn't mean that the blower is junk, it just means that it could have problems with the bottom end. And also what you want to do is you want to grab this flywheel and you just want to try to lift it up and down to see if there's any play in the crankshaft at all. So if there's a lot of play in the crankshaft, then, you know, and again, if there's a lot of play in the crankshaft and the blower is over two years old, you know, I would venture to say to probably just, you know, avoid it and try to find something else if you can. Or if it feels really tight when you turn it over, that could be a good indicator that it has some engine, internal engine problems. So let me pull the main cover off of it and then I'll show you further. Okay, I got the engine cover off and on these engine covers, let me discuss one thing really quick here. These engine covers have these little spacers that are pressed into the plastic housings. There's three of them. There's one here, one here, and one here. Now, it's pretty common across most of the stills, especially the blowers, that these things will eventually, due to vibration, they'll come out of the plastic and they'll fall out. You do want to retain these because the recoil goes over these to keep it centered. And it also works as a small spacer as well. So you want to try to make sure that these things are in the plastic and they're not just floating around. A lot of people, sometimes what will happen is if somebody will take this engine cover off, these things will fall out and they'll stick themselves to the flywheel like that. And when they're stuck to the flywheel like that, then they're in there and they get caught and they get wedged between the coil and they cause all kinds of problems. So with these backpack blower engine covers, you want to look for these, make sure that they're in there. Um, you know, you can just kind of push them back into the plastic. You can like melt the plastic a little bit to lock them in or whatever. You know, I've even put like a little bit of grease on them just to hold them in place until I get the thing bolted back together again. Because otherwise they just like to fall out. So that's one thing to look for with these covers. You want to make sure that those three spacers are in there. Okay, so this blower here, you can see it's got a couple leaks here. You can see the leaking down the uh, air filter housing here. And that's indicative usually of a bad primer, the primer or a bad fuel line. They will cause a leak and run down. And then as I flip this thing up, you can see the engine pan is quite wet. So basically what happens is, is the engine pan bolts, there's four of them, one here, there's one here, and then there's two back down underneath there. Just from vibration, those bolts like to loosen up and back out. These appear to be tight, but I'll throw up a couple pictures of one that I fixed recently that you can see the heads of the bolts are broken off. And that is a very common problem that I run into anyway with these blowers. I see it quite a bit. I can't tell you how many of these engine pans I've had to replace and reseal over the years. It is something that happens quite a bit. So that is something that's probably the number one thing to look for with these blowers and as they age they just they tend to get worse and worse another thing would be carburetor shafts as they wear out 
This one doesn't look too bad. So what you're going to want to do, I can get in here with my hand. So here's your throttle. So what you're going to want to do is just grab this thing and you're going to want to try to pick it up and down. Just try to lift it up and down like that to see how much play there is. This one is fine. It's nice and tight. No issues there. Again, I have another video in my playlist of a very severe worn carburetor shaft. And when that shaft starts to wear, they won't run right. It'll cause all kinds of problems. It'll create vacuum leaks. It'll create fuel leakage all down here like this is. So that is something to be aware of with that. Another engine problem would be the wrist pins between the crankshaft and the piston. There was some clearance issues with these things for a lot of years and they would eventually seize up. The piston would seize on the connecting rod. So basically it would lock up the crankshaft and you would not be able to spin it. So if you find one of these, but there's no leaking and everything looks good and dry, say somebody pressure washed it and cleaned it and tried to hide, the, hide a problem with it. But if it turns over really stiff, or if it feels stiff at all, then that could be an indicator that the wrist pin has an issue. I have one here. Let me go find one, and then I'll show that to you exactly what I'm talking about. So here I've got a crankshaft out of a BR800, and I still see this occasionally with the BR800, the new version, as well. It doesn't happen quite as often. Still did tell us that they did supposedly open up the clearances on the wrist pin with these things, but it does happen occasionally so what happens is is and this is from a customer that's a very reliable customer who is a commercial very diligent about his his fuel and oiling and it's still locked up so we still see it on occasion so this wrist pin I'm trying to do this one-handed here sorry so this thing is locked up solid on the wrist pin the piston it will no longer rotate so this is something that still happens on occasion again this is a BR800 so this is something that does happen quite a bit with the BR600s and the BR700 because the BR700 is the same engine so those are the two major things that I run into would be the loose engine pans and the wrist pins locking up Aside from that, these engines are very reliable. They're good on fuel, and there's no other real major problems with them. If you're not running good fuel in these engines and good oil, I will see carbon buildup. So what happens is, is somebody will be running this blower and it'll just die on them. And what happens is, is carbon will build up inside the cylinder and on the piston and on the exhaust valve. And a little piece of carbon will get caught between the valve and the seat and it'll lose all compression and it'll shut down. And then what I have to do is go in there and do a valve job or still makes this chemical that you can put inside the combustion chamber to let it soak, you know, for X amount of hours or whatnot. That'll break down the carbon. It's a decarbon uh, solution. I don't use it anymore, I used to, um, but now they make, this, they make this tool that goes in through the exhaust port and it basically will clean, out, clean that valve and clean that seat to try to uh, eliminate that carbon out of there. So that's something to be aware of. You need to make sure you're running good fuel and good oil in these things as well. And when I say good oil, I mean it's just really any kind of either stills oil or as far as I'm concerned, any of the major manufacturers, they all, they're all making really good oil nowadays. So just, you know, no gas station off-brand, no-name oil is basically what I'm saying is to avoid. Uh, the air filter design on these, which I was discussing earlier. So these covers, it's very important that these covers are not broken or cracked in, in any part of it. So when you have these big stickers on here you want to flip it over and you want to look inside of it and make sure there's no cracking in here because what that does is that it's allowing the dirt to get sucked in so the earlier air filter designs you have the air filter in the housing 
the air would come through this way and then it would go up air comes in it goes up goes through the filter and it goes up and then into the carburetor so if this cover is cracked or broken or has a hole in it you're just sucking pure dirt so you want to make sure that the still BR600 the 700 and the 500 as well that these covers are not cracked or broken anywhere very important to look for that the new design the br 800s it doesn't matter all the covers there to do is to hold the air filter design because now the air go the filtered air goes through here and then it comes back up and then goes around and goes in so it bypasses that it's a different system now so you don't have to worry about the cover as much so something to look for the br 600 500 and the 700 specifically overall i think that kind of covers engine problems muffler wise i don't have any issues with the mufflers on these things whatsoever uh, not too many problems at all they don't crack and fall apart and break off or nothing like that the coils are very reliable on these they hold up quite well i don't see a lot of problems occasionally you'll get the boot you know they they get sticky or whatnot, and they'll fall off. The boot will come off. You'll just have to put it back on. Not a big deal. Valve adjustments, you just want to make sure you stay on top of the valve adjustments with these things. And again, just normal maintenance. If you're doing normal maintenance and keeping an eye on it, and if you start to see any kind of leakage down here or wetness or whatnot, you want to address that immediately as fast as you can. Still is really good about warranting those as long as it's within the warranty period. Um, they've been really good about covering that issue. It is a known thing to them. So, But overall, I think I've pretty much covered it. Those are the things to look for on the BR600. And this again, this covers the BR700 as well. Let me throw the 700 up here, and then I'll kind of show you the differences between the two. Okay, so looking at these two blowers side by side... You can see the difference in the fan housings themselves. This is the BR700. This is much taller and wider. The BR600 is shorter and narrower. Engine-wise, again, they're exactly the same. They just changed the fan housing designs and the tube diameters as well for more CFM. So the BR700 will make far more CFM than the BR600, but the BR600 makes more mile per hour airspeed than the BR700. So the BR600 makes 677 CFM compared to 901 CFM for the BR700. And then the mile per hour is 238 miles per hour on the BR600. And the BR700 is 193. So those are the two differences between the fan housings themselves. Otherwise, the frames are the same. Everything else is the same. They did start putting this piece on the bottom of the frames basically to keep the frame itself from wearing out. This plate, uh, piece is replaceable. So as this wears out, you can just replace this and not the frame. Because some of these older ones, just from dragging on the ground, you can see a little bit of wear on this one here they would completely wear out to the point where I've seen them touching the tank and wearing into the tank even, just from dragging on the ground. So that is one nice feature of the newer ones. They added this piece here. Other than that, they're the same. And then the tube diameters, you can definitely see the difference between the two. Much larger on the 700 here versus the 600. So if you're looking for... Uh, if you're looking for that CFM, you're just looking for that volume of air, the BR700 is the one to go with. But if you're looking for air speed, then the BR600 would be the one to go for, go for in that case. So it's just kind of preference as far as what you need and what you want in a blower. It seems to be like a lot of guys, well, <laughs> a lot of our guys anyway, they don't care. They just want the, they want the most powerful blower they can get. It doesn't matter what it is. So... But some guys like to, you know, they want this, they want the volume for like, say, leaves and whatnot. But then there's cases like in here in Arizona where there's a lot of rock, stuff like that. But they want the air speed to get all that uh, material out of the rock itself. So, again, it's just preference. You got to, uh, you got to use both of them, you know, test them out and determine which one's best for you.
So there you go, there's the BR600 and the 700. And again, the information that I gave pretty much crosses over between the two. The only real difference is, again, is just the fan housings on the BR700 is much larger and the tubes are much larger, otherwise they're the same blower. So, uh, any questions, let me know. If you guys see anything else that uh, I may not be seeing, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Sorry I haven't been posting too many of these lately. We've been extremely busy here at work lately. This is our scalping season, getting ready to put in winter lawns here in Arizona. So it's been a little bit hectic here for doing these, uh, these videos. So if you like what you're seeing, leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you watching.